Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today what we're going to do is look at building on top of the previous video where I've corrected the follow camera um, for like a Dead Nation style zombie shooter. Uh, essentially what we what I've done here is I've built on top of it. I've given it a bit more of a mood with um, using one of the uh, marketplace uh, add-ons uh, called Good Sky, which uh, one of the presets is like a Blood Moon, which is give it a nice dark vibe which is pretty cool. I've also added in uh, the follow torch which kind of is one of the signature things of Dead Nation where each player has got their own colour. Obviously I've set this one to blue and I've also put the pointer uh, laser beam in the game so then you know where you're shooting. Currently it does pass straight through um, all objects of the game. Uh, it's literally just made up of a particle system which fires a laser throughout the entire map. Um, but once I've set up the um, the line trace for the weapon, uh, then I'll link it to, to the line trace to prevent it from going through objects. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and also the, the character now perfectly um, follows along with... Uh, wherever the mouse is pointing so one of the previous uh, one of the issues in the previous project or the previous video was the the, the motion um, works pretty nicely but it the the actual aiming and, and the way that the character moves with with mouse control uh, wasn't optimized it was it was built with the intention to be used with a game controller um, Whereas now I've, I've further looked into how I would optimize it for a PC, and this is what I've what I've come up with. So now wherever the mouse pointer is on the game, which I've currently set to show the cursor, just so you can see where where it's going, it'll follow it around, and then the character strafes um, wherever else it goes. So um, the character is always looking where he should be going. So, with that said and done, let's jump in and let's get this built. Okay, so just before we we um, we get started with this video, just some prerequisites. Um, so, some of the things that I'm going to be using in this video, which might be worth you getting up front, is the FPS uh, weapons bundle um, or the assault pack. It's you know it's up to you. I've used the FPS weapon bundle. That's free on the marketplace. Um, the other thing is Good Sky. Um, that's another. It's you know it's another asset for you to add that's going to give you your blood moon type um, uh, effect like the sky and the darkness and also if you want to get the oh it's just there uh, is the animation starter pack um, that will give you um, a character that can hold a weapon um, and it's got a full blueprint animation blueprint which will allow you to strafe around whilst aiming um, and I think that is about it so now that's out of the way, let's get back into the rest. So here's a quick rundown of what we're going to be doing. Um, I've got the event tick there, but that's not actually what runs this. Um, you can use an event tick, but it, you know it's, it's pretty expensive. I'd recommend linking this to uh, the mouse input because everything else really relies on it. So what we're going to do is we'll get the player controller, which is going to find, or there's a function here to get the hit result underneath the cursor. So effectively that just turns wherever your mouse is on the screen into a point in the 3D world and then that generates a hit result which then we can get the location from that well sorry I maxed out a little bit too much there so from the location there we can plug that in as a target in the world to find the rotation between our actors location and where our mouse is in the world and then we can use the sort of the rotation that this um, has provided between our actor and the, the, the mouse and we can use that to rotate our character. So here then we, we plug in set actor rotation and we're essentially just wherever, whatever the value is between my mouse and the character, it just completes that. So my essentially my character will always look at where my mouse is. So that gives you your kind of strafe um, aim type thing. And then to follow on to that, then we, we one of the other things is the, the actual beam um, that is your aim essentially. Um, we, we also use a similar system here we're going to get the actor's location and, and, and set that as where the source of our laser beam is and then we're just going to get our forward vector uh, that's basically which way is my character pointing times that by a, a, a distance 
and then plug that in as the target point. So it's going to go from where my actor starts and then, uh, you know, 2,500 units in front of my character is where the end of the target is. But as I said it earlier, um, once the line trace is set up, I'll essentially set up the end point to be where the line trace um, hits so then it won't pass through objects. But that's up to you, you can leave it however, however you want it. Yep, and that's pretty much it. Um, everything else is just set up in, in, in the level and we'll get through to that. So let's get into that now. Okay, so hopefully I've just undone all of the changes that I made um, and your project should look similar to this if you followed along from the previous video. Um, apart from obviously the map that I've just messed around with a little bit. This is just a template with the walls moved around a little bit. So, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the easiest thing first. So, as, this, as, as I sort of like pre-discussed a, a moment ago, um, what you want to do is you want to get the Good Sky um, asset. Um, just to start off, we'll start off with the simple stuff. Hit Add to Project, select your project, which for me I've just got Follow Cam. Now, once you've added it, you'll notice in your contents folder, you'll have a Good Sky folder. If you just double click on that, go into Blueprints and you'll see BP Good Sky. Now, um, in your assets, now unfortunately I've deleted mine, um, in your assets, you, if you just type in Sky, you should have something like BP Sky Sphere or something like that. You just want to remove that. You don't have to because I believe this one just overwrites your previous one, um, but you don't require it anymore. So, with that being deleted, now you can just drag your BP Sky straight into your world. Um, and I, I typically put it on my floor level. Uh, so I just drag it onto the floor because that kind of sets up the horizon as well. And over on the right hand side with it selected in the details, you'll see Sky Preset. And you just, just want to set that to Midnight Blood Moon and that gives you this nice dark, um, not dark, but this, this red sky. Now, obviously everything's still lit, lit up, so if you want to scroll up and find under your lighting, you've got light source, and you want to set this down to like one, uh, one looks, and that gives you this nice dark feel for it. Yep, so everything's dark, your sky's all blood and red, but you, you won't see that anyway in your game because of your uh, the, the top-down nature. But everything's got this red tinge to it now, which just gives it like this nice dark feeling to it. Obviously, if you don't want that red tinge, you can go back to your good sky and you can set your, you can customize all your effects, you know, um, if you're having a moon, any storms, what different clouds, um, if, if you don't want blood moon, you can go for midnight storm and again, that'll give you like a, a blue back background and actually that'll give you like a thunderstorm, hence the name storm. But you, you can go through this and you can customize this to the look and feel. You know, there's there's tons, there's tons of uh, tons of presets. You can go for just completely dark if you want. It's up to you. But I quite like the uh, the Blood Moon. I like that red tinge. It gives me a bit more of a ominous presence. Um, so yeah, with that set up, we can now move on to the next bit. Okay, now for the next bit, this is also quite a simple simple change. So if we go back to the marketplace and we go back to um, the marketplace, there is a Anim Starter Pack. Anim Asian Starter. Let's have a look. Here we go. Animation Starter Pack, made by Epic Games, completely free. Add that to your project. And then once once you've added that, again in your contents folder you'll see Anim Starter Pack. Now within this, there's a hundred, you know, there's hundreds of, uh, there might not be hundreds, but there's there's a lot of animations. But there's an animation blueprint just here. Now it does come with its own mannequin as well. So what we're going to do, we're just going to switch this over. Um, so select your third person character. If you've not still got your character in the world, maybe you've just relied on the player start. Go to your third person BP, blueprints, and open up your character blueprint. Now, over on the left, uh, you've, you may have noticed I've deleted a few things. I only need the mesh, the capsule, and the other bits and pieces. Under your mesh, select your mesh. Um, 
underneath the animation, uh, the animation class, we're going to click on that and at the bottom you'll see UE4 ASP, Animation Starter Pack, uh, Hero TPP Blueprint. Click on that and you, your character will then just quickly jump into the T pause. That's because it's not made on this mesh, it is slightly different. Um, so to fix that we're just going to click on SK Mannequin here and we're going to, there should be another SK Mannequin and if you hover over it the path should be uh, animation starter pack. So select that and you'll notice now that your character strikes a pause where he's holding a gun at hip fire. So now we're good to go for the next bit. Okay, for the next bit what we're going to do is we're going to actually put a gun in his hand so it doesn't look as strange. Now, before you have the gun, if you want to go back to your marketplace uh, and you want to search for, um, I've got this downloaded already, you want to look for your FPS weapon bundle. Uh, this is by Dead Ghost Interactive. This also should be free. Again, press add to project and then once that's in, you should notice in your contents you will have the FPS weapon bundle. And there's quite a few weapons in here. You can you can pick whichever one that you want, uh, but I believe I've gone for the AR4. Um, you can go for the KA47, which is what you'll recognise as um, almost like an AK47. Or if you do know weapons, you know uh, you the KA. That being said, jump back into your character. Now at the moment, there's not really a slot for the weapon to be added to. So what we'll do is we'll click on the mesh, and we're going to press Add Component. Now these weapons are set up using a skeletal mesh, so you want to select skeletal mesh, and I'm just going to put weapon. Now this weapon, obviously you want it to be in the, the character's hand, so over on the right hand side under sockets, parent socket, we're just going to set this to hand R, and that kind of just uses the, um, the hand here as a basis or an anchor. So basically wherever your character's hand moves around the gun will move with it. So now that's been set up. Also on the right under mesh you can now pick your skeletal mesh. So I've, I'm going to pick here um, SKAR4 and that should give me a gun although it is pointing in the wrong direction. We can go up to the transform and change the rotation to 90 and that's now in the right orientation. But if we just zoom in a little bit and using the uh, the movement widget, I'm just going to pull it forward and then maybe we need to move it back and I'm probably going to need to fine adjust this uh, to like minus five, no, minus two, uh, which direction are we going in here? Two, why am I going back? Minus ten, which direction am I going in here? Let's move that and then move it down maybe just a tickle. And actually I want to rotate it just a little bit too. So then I'm going to move that back up to like minus one. You know what, for the purpose of this video I think that will do. I'm probably going to move that over to like five. Yeah, that'll do. So there I've got minus 10 on the X, uh, 5 on the Y and minus 1 on the Z. And then I've got a 10 degree rotation on the X and a 90 degree rotation on the Z. And now that should look pretty comfortable in his hand. I'm going to hit compile and I'm going to run that and just to make sure it looks alright in the game. So now you can see we've got our character who runs around. I'm just using W, A, S and D there. You know, the mouse at this point doesn't do anything for the character. Um, and that's pretty much how the movement was in the previous one. But he, he does he does tend to strafe a little bit better uh, in this. So let's get that movement sorted. Actually, I just thought before we move on to um, fixing the movement, um, another simple thing that we can add here is the the light. So again, underneath the weapon, um, you can select the mesh, I guess, um, and go to add component. And for the for the torch, I'm actually going to use a spotlight. So select a spotlight, and then the location again. Uh, sorry, the rotation is 90. 
Now, this is completely up for you to just like manipulate. So I'm, I'm going to move this up to about his, his chest. And I'm going to move it forward slightly so it doesn't clip. Um, and then I'm just going to press compile and play and just see what that looks like to start with. So at the moment, I can't really see anything. It's not bright enough. So over on the right here, I'm going to change the intensity to... You can, I mean, to be honest, I don't like the way that it's set up in, in Unreal. I've, I'm actually setting the brightness there to 10,000. So now, you know, now I'm actually getting some brightness. Now, you can see there that my, it's casting a shadow on my gun. So I'm going to pull that forward a bit more. Because I don't want my gun to get in the way of that. Another thing you could do, you could just lift it up a bit more. And I, I guess that would solve that too. So there you go. I just I think just just tip of my gun is catching that. So I'll move it forward. So I've pulled that forward by 50, and the height is uh, 150, and then that should now leave that. Yep. So now it's just a color switch. You can change there just on the the intensity. You can pull that round to blue. You can pick whatever color you want, obviously. Um, but I'm gonna go for the blue. Hit OK. Press play, and now we've got a blue light. Now. The other thing is, obviously, um, that cone is massive. The distance is massive. I'm probably going to lower, uh, lower that cone to like 500. And the outer cone angle, I'm pr uh, is 40, all right. Let's see what difference that made. But again, it still doesn't look bright, does it? So what you can do to change that brightness is under the intensity units, it's unitless at the moment. If you change that to lumens. Obviously, that, that is now massive. Um, let's go. It, you know, that's pretty crap. So let's set that to a thousand lumen, and hopefully that should be a lot brighter now. So there we go. That's brighter, but I think 1,500 might be better. So now that's actually doing something that we want. I think I might make it a bit more blue. Give it a bit more blue. Let's just set it to max, actually. There you go. Now we've got a blue light. And you can play around with these. Obviously, the, the cone, I've set it to really shallow. You can pull that back to a 1,000. You can pull that cone's angle in a little bit more. Give it more of a directional cone. But now we've done that, obviously, it looks really far away, too. Um, so this is, this is really for you to... Let's, let's set an inner cone angle of 20. That seems to have made it a lot brighter also. So let's pull that back. See what that does. I think his head's going to get in the way now. Yep. Put it above his head. Yep. Can we pull that back? His head's going to get in the way again. You can, I think you can set this to ignore. Ignore actors or something like that. Yep. But I'll leave that for you to, you, you can mess around with that however you please. Um, pulling it lower to the ground will help too. There you go, it's a lot closer now. But the intensity, the colour, the corn, that is completely unique, unique to everybody else's game. So I'm going to leave yous to, uh, to pick that up. But I think I like that now. Um, I've set that to uh, 44 outer corn, 20 inner corn. The attenuation radius is about, I set it to 1000, but it slightly adjusted it based on the other settings. And my intensity was 1500 lumens. And the intensity unit, you might not be able to see that actually, I just, just had a thought there. Uh, underneath the light, you might need to click on this little show advanced for, for your light. And your intensity units there would be changed to uh, from unitless to lumens. And then obviously having the light quite close to your feet has uh, given, given you that effect, which I'm quite happy with. So let's move on to the next bit. Okay, so now's probably a good time to also do the rotation for the character. Now, this one's quite... Uh, an easy one to put together. We are going to be using some nodes, which are, I, don't, I don't think I use that often, but do come in handy from time to time. So while we're in your character, let's go over to the event graph. Now, 
the blueprint we're about to make, you can make off the back of a tick. However, um, using a tick is typically um, not best practice. So, because everything's going to be based on uh, our sort of like our mouse direction, um, what you could do is just grab your mouse input, and I'm just going to drag the whole comment up to the top just to give me a bit of room. And we can use because every time you move your mouse, the input axis turn is being called anyway. So, um, and our, our character is going to be based off this movement anyway. So. Every time this calls, what we'll do will will then work off the the mouse input, and that that'll that's you know that's as close to a tick as we're gonna get. We are actually using a tick, um, so it, it saves a bit more on performance there. But if you do run into any issues, if it is you know sort of janky looking, you could just use a tick for the time being, um, which I, I set it up with a tick and then moved to this afterwards. So I'm just gonna build straight off here. Anyway, enough with all that. Let's just get on with it. So, what we're going to be doing, we're essentially, if I just jump into the game, wherever my mouse is in the level, I want my character to rotate itself to look at where the mouse is in the world. So for me to do that, back in the event graph, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get the mouse's location in the world. Now, to do this you want to get your player controller because your, your mouse you know your input is recorded by your player controller so to get your mouse's location we're going to need the controller now from the controller there's a, a node called get hit result under so if you just type in get hit so we've got get hit result under cursor or finger Obviously, if you're going for an Android game, you probably want finger, um, but we're, we're, we're looking at a, a PC here, so I'll work for cursor and by channel. So essentially what this does is it does, a, it does a line trace from where the mouse is in the world down into the world, and then it gives you a hit. And from this hit, if you drag off that, you can break it, and essentially that breaks the hit into its many components where it was, what time it hit, what distance did it travel, the normal face, you know, what, what sort of angle did it hit on, um, what bone did it hit, um, what actor did it hit, what component did it hit, and it gives you all this information, which is brilliant. At the moment, we just want location, and we want to use that location to find the sort of rotation between where we are now and where, it's, where that hit location is. And then what we'll just do is set our character's rotation to that. So, what we're going to do, let's just drag off this execute node of the add controller your input. And let's just do set actor uh, rotation, yeah? So here what we're going to do is we're going to set the actor's rotation. Now, for us to find that new rotation, um, we're going to get... We're going to need to find find the rotation between our cursor and our character's current location. So to do this, we're going to need another interesting node called Find uh, Look at Rotation. So this text uh, a start vector and a target vector finds the difference and then gives you the rotation that you're going to need to look at it. So in theory, that is going to be our rotation. Our target is going to be what we're, where our mouse is, and our start location is going to be our get actor location. So we are currently here. We want to be here. Here's the rotation you're going to need to do it. Set that rotation, and hopefully, with all things going to plan, if we hit play now, our character now does that. Now, you will notice that is a little bit weird. Because as we uh, put the mouse underneath the character, it's actually rotating the entire character in like a 360 degree ball. Um, so we're, we're, we're pointing up the top of the stairs now, we're pointing at the top of that wall. That's not exactly what we planned. So let's just close out of that. And what we're going to do, if you hold Alt, click on this line and remove it, we actually need to split this rotation and we need to split our set rotation because we only need the Z or the Yar um, 
because that's just going to make it rotate by his feet rather than roll or spin. Hit compile, press play, and now if we look up the stairs or we look at the wall or we look underneath it, we're only going to get that spin. So now what you've got is you've got exactly how you'd expect. Wherever the mouse is, the character looks at it, and then with the W, A, S, and D key, you can now strafe around. And then obviously once we've set up a line trace, you'll have a, a firing weapon as well. Um, but the line trace unfortunately is going to be in the next video. But for the time being what we can do is we can set up a laser beam. So, the laser beam is going to tie in to this bit. But we just need to do one of a one of a thing before we get to that point. So... This one I've not actually disassembled, so I'm not going to recreate it, but I'm going to show you on screen now what you need to make it. What you want to do is you want to you want to create a brand new material. I tell you what, I guess I could recommit, recreate it. So once you've created a new material, obviously mine's just called new material. I'd give yours an appropriate name like laser or something like that. When you first open it, this, this node should be selected, and then in the left you should have material. Now you want to set this uh, to surface, it wants to be set to translucent, and instead of default lit, you want it set to unlit. So at the moment that's just black. So the first node that you want to add in here is a texture coordinate. Where is it? There we go, under coordinates, text coordinate. Let's drop that down. You should get like a weird multicolored thing. Yeah, there you go. Um, from this, we want to do a mask, which I think is a conditional oh, sorry, uh, mask. I forget which one it's called now. Component mask. There we go. Underneath the math node, component mask. And this will say RGB. But we don't want, uh, we only want G. So untick R, if B's ticked or alpha's ticked, untick them. So just have the G ticked. So what you can see now is that that's that's giving us like a sort of dark edge on this. So we want to we want to flip that. So we've got it on both sides. So. Just before we do that, let's plug this into a multiply. And then if you hold zero on the key, no, not zero. If you hold one on the keyboard and click, this will give you a, a single value. Um, I think it might be called a Scala parameter. No, it's not a Scala parameter. <laughs> it, it's just a single digit um, value uh, or expression. And we want to type in 0.5. Plug this into your multiply, and that'll just make it, a, you know, a half the strength. And then from that, we want a sign, and, and a sign is where basically it's gonna put this on the top and bottom. So you can see now we've got dark at the um, at the top, and we've got dark at the bottom. Yep, that looks fine. And then. To get a colour, we're actually going to use uh, we're going to use the particle system to make this laser beam. Um, and what we want to do is we want to get the particle colour, and that's going to that's control it for us. So let's just pop that in here. Okay. And then what we want, if you hold M on the keyboard and click, you'll get a multiply. You want two of those. So essentially, we want one to go into the emissive and one to go into the opacity. And we want the particle colour to go into the A of this multiply. And then the sign to go into the B of this. And I feel like I've missed a step here, actually. Okay, let me just check my other one. Because I feel like I've missed a step there. Power. There we go. I've missed one. Let's get rid of that. So, most of this is right up until a point. So, from the sign... Let's just add a power. Yep. And so that wants to go into uh, B. That goes into A. And then that goes into B. 
There we go. So you, from your power, you're going to be for both of them, and for the ears, you want to go from the particle color. And if you select here on the left in the preview, if you set a square, it's more evident from the top. You can see here that it's it's sort of faded out at the edges and then solid in the middle. Gives you a nice laser beam style start, I guess, material. Um, hit apply. Sometimes when you press apply, this can hang around a little bit. Hit save and you're good to go. So we're going to close that out. I'm going to go ahead with my already created laser material. However, it is it's set up identical. So you're fine there. So now you've got your laser beam. You now need to make a particle system. So for that, you want to go, well, you can just right click and it's there, particle system. Give it that an appropriate name called beam. And then once you're inside here, so you just need to add a few things yourself. So to start with, you want to right click and there is um, a data type or type data at the top. Uh, you want to go to new beam data and that will give you this node. And then with that selected, you just want to make sure that the speed is set to zero and make sure that the max beam count is one. And that will give you just the one line. And don't worry if yours looks like it's all flickering and stuff. You'll, it'll look right by the end of it. Um, let's check the required. Underneath the required, obviously you want to select your material as the laser material that we've just created. And I feel like... Make sure that your emitter duration is zero. I'm just going down these just to make sure that I've not... Uh, forgot to change anything else. I don't think I've changed these to be honest. Um, okay, now on spawn. So under the spawn rate, I have that set to one. And I think that's it. Lifetime, I don't believe I changed the lifetime of this one. The min and max is set to one. Initial size. So for me, um, I think the default values were 25, 25, 25 all across the board. That was a little bit too big for me, a little bit too thick. Um, a big chunky laser beam across the, the game wasn't, wasn't what I was going for. So underneath the start size distribution and then uh, max and min, I've got five across the board. And that's that. Initial velocity, um, just in case yours are any different. Um, for my... Uh, start velocity I've got 10, 10, 100 and minus 10, minus 10, 50. I believe that is the default so I don't think that's changed but these arrows make me question myself sometimes. And then here we go, colour over life. This is the one that you're going to be slightly more interested in because you get to pick what colour your beam is. Now the max and min, if you want it to be this, obviously a solid colour beam, um, you want these to be the same colour um, but if you was to change one of them to a green or something like that. Uh, as you can see there, it starts to flicker between the two. Um, but the, be the best way to make sure that they're, they're the same is once you've picked a color you like, just copy the um, hex RGB, copy that, and then go into your second color and just paste it in there. And then that way you're confident that you've got the same color. Now it, might, it might flicker every now and then, but it, it doesn't do that in the game. And once you've got the color that you're happy with, you're good to go there. And then here we are, two extra um, bits of data that you just need to add yourself. So if you right click and under beam, you've got source and target. So you just want to press both of them. Um, so you'll need to go in, hit source and then go back in and hit target. And what you want to do is you want to select both of these and where the source method is, you want to set these to user set. They will be set to default, but we want to set this in game ourselves. Same for that one, user set. And hit save, and then that should be your uh, particle system for your beam set up. So, with that being created, with, with both of them, what you want to do is go back into your uh, third person character. And underneath your mesh, let's go to add component, and go to particle system. Now, if you've got it selected, like I have here, um, it will say particle system beam and it will know which one that you're, you're, you're wanting to add. 
If not, it'll just say particle system. And then from in the menu, you can select uh, beam because you, you you should have only have one or if, if, you, if you're building this on top of another project then you might have several but uh, select beam and then you're good to go. Now from the beam obviously we uh, if you drag that into your event graph so just click and drag um, from the beam node and type in set source oh, I just nearly knocked my mic off the desk then. Um, set source and then we can do here set beam source point uh, so we want that and of course it puts another beam there oh no get rid of that yep and then same again from beam set uh, target point so here we've got two nodes so we're gonna we're gonna set the source point and we're gonna set the target point and we want to do this after the rotation Double click, neaten that up a little bit. Put that there. Put that there. Why not? It's going to look nasty in a minute anyway. Um, right. So we're doing set actor rotation, which has already been covered, and then set beam and source and target point. I needed to pause for a second, then I needed a sip of my coffee. Um, right. So for the uh, set beam source. Um, what we're going to do is the source I'm actually going to set to the characters or the actors location because that's a good place to start where we're currently stood so we can just drag that straight over here um, I said this was going to look nasty but you can uh, you can adjust this however you like um, yeah I'm not going to worry too much about that because you'll make it look nice and pretty um, so we've got a beam source uh, so at the moment I don't know if you'll will, will you see it yet with it not having a target location so yeah it's there at the floor at the moment you can see there's just a faint blue line um, so now what we need to do is we need to kind of get like the actors um, like which way he's facing and then say well which way he's facing times a distance and then that should be the our end point similar to how you would set up a line trace if you're familiar with that process so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get actor forward vector and essentially this is, this just gives you a vector direction of which way the character is facing in world space and then if we then times that by a oh, no, times a, a float so what you want to do is you want to get this vector and let's do 2500 and then we set that into our new target point hopefully if that's set up correctly you've now got a laser beam which follows your character so you may have noticed that in the test there the the line isn't actually meeting up with the mouse and it's it's kind of slightly skewed because um, the forward direction is accurate but the character slightly off center um, so to fix that what we actually need to do is we need to get the actors location and take that into consideration So if you right-click and get actor location actor location And then what we what we actually want to do is If we get the forward vector And then add That distance to the actors location and then plug that in as a target so we're getting our location get a distance location and sort of combining them together to get a more accurate representation of where we actually are looking you'll notice now that um, the apart from when you look off screen <laughs> um, the the line and your character are almost perfectly in sync now or are perfectly in sync now so there you've got it. You've got a Dead Nation style laser pointer with a torch, which now you can run through your map, light up the torch, light up your way. And then once the gun's set up, which please consider subscribing because um, I am going to be adding the line trace to it and getting that set up. And uh, it'd be great for you to get that too. Um, once that's set up, you, you'll you be good to go. You'll be able to make like a zombie shooter style. Um, kill them all. Why not? Eh? So, hopefully the things that I've covered in this video have helped you out. 
Um, if anything hasn't worked or if um, I, I've, I've really considered time today in this one. Uh, so at, at times it might feel like I've, I've rushed through things, uh, which I do apologize for that. I, I'm just conscious that some of my videos are quite lengthy. Um, and I know sometimes that people just want to, you know, get the information. Um, so I'm trying to merge between people who want full videos, full explanations, but also people who just want quick information. You know, let me know in the comments which one you prefer. If you want me to just slow it down all the time and just explain everything, because it, you know, it doesn't help me rushing through it either. Uh, sometimes I do forget things, um, which doesn't help. I don't script these. I just, I kind of go with it. Um, or if you'd want just a quick burst of do this, do this, do this. You know, whichever you prefer, or both. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too afraid to maybe go down both avenues of making two videos for the same subject, one detailed and one quick fire. Here's how you get it done. I'd love to know your feedback on that one. Anyway, with all that said and done, um, thank you if you've watched it all the way to this far. And thank you if you've um, you've managed to survive through that mumbo jumbo. But. Thanks for watching, see you in another video, and have a good day. Bye bye.